I definitely think that energy security has um, become a much greater priority in light of the uh, situation in Ukraine. Um, and I think, you know, understandable that we're focused now very much on how we can disarm Vladimir Putin of what is being a very significant weapon of his, which is his ability to export gas and make lots of tax revenue from that. However, I'm sceptical still that fracking uh, would generate sufficient quantities of gas to be able to significantly improve our situation with regards to energy security. Yes, there are big reserves of shale gas within the UK. However, only a small fraction of that is actually extractable. We know from previous attempts at fracking that it causes earth tremors which frequently calls those fracking operations to stop, and it comes up against significant local opposition. So I just don't think it's practical to put all of our hopes and expectations in fracking as a route out of this. Instead, I think a more practical approach would be to insulate people's homes so that we just use less gas. Um, and I think there have been various schemes tried over the years. I think we need a serious long-term commitment to install insulation in people's walls and roofs, and then we would reduce our gas and improve our energy security and take away this weapon from Vladimir Putin that he has at the moment. Well, I think the case for fracking potentially cutting people's energy bills is even worse than the case for improving our energy security. So we're part of a wider interconnected European gas market. There are pipelines connecting the UK to continental Europe. Um, the gas price is set at that European level. We also get imports of LNG, which also, again, reflect the market price. So any shale gas that was extracted in the UK would simply be sold at that wider European price. And so I think that its potential for uh, reducing people's bills is very small. On the other hand, we do know that um, wind and solar being the cheapest forms of new electricity generation right now uh, are able to cut people's energy bills because it means that we burn less gas for electricity. Similarly, insulation and energy efficiency, which I mentioned earlier as being good for energy security, that too would help cut people's bills right now if we installed that lagging in people's homes and meant that they uh, wasted less energy. So I think those are much better solutions in terms of dealing with people's energy bills and rather than doubling down yet again on people's uh, on gas. I, I am accepting of the fact that we're going to need gas during the transition. We're going to need it to back up the renewable energy generation. We're going to need it to continue heating our homes. And the government is continuing to extract oil and gas out of the North Sea as well. And indeed, recently approved a new set of licenses uh, in the North Sea to open up new gas fields. So I'm not saying that we turn the taps off on gas overnight. I don't think that's realistic. I think it has to be uh, a transition over a number of years. However, what I am sceptical of is the merit in starting up this whole new industry in, in terms of shale, which we spend a decade basically uh, trying to get off the ground in the 2010s, uh, came up against local opposition, didn't really have any significant effect, wasted millions of taxpayers' money. And I just think it's a false solution being pushed now. And actually, we are fortunate that the energy economics of clean energy have got much better. And now seems the time to be doubling down and accelerating on those rather than looking to these technologies of the past.